Hello everyone, welcome to COMP 125, Principles of Computing. In this video, we are going to start our discussion about um, system software and virtual machines. So in chapter 4 and 5, we have learned that how a physical computer can be um, actually created and we have seen a computer designed based on the one Newman architecture. Uh, this program, uh, this computer is uh, that was actually a physical machine that uh, um, can execute the programs that we have written in chapter 2. Those algorithms that we have written in chapter 2, we can create a physical machine that can execute those programs. But that machine, um, you know, uh, we call it actually a naked machine because uh, if you are going to execute any program, any algorithm on that machine, um, the user... Um, anyone who is working with that machine needs to uh, write down the program in binary, um, load that program in the memory. If you um, wanted to actually work with some data, write the data in the memory again, also load that data on the, on the uh, sorry, um, write the data in binary and load it on the memory again. And you should, uh, you know, know all the addresses of the memory and, um, so where the program has been, um, you know, stored, where the data has been stored, and you actually um, sent a signal to the um, to the machine so that it actually started executing the program from, um, you know, the starting actual address that the program, the whole program has been actually stored and uh, all these details. So you can actually see that we call it actually a naked machine because it doesn't uh, give you any kind of tool, any help to the user to work with it. The user is responsible to do all of these jobs, um, you know, writing everything in binary, storing it in the memory, knowing all the addresses of the memory, where the data has been stored, where the program has been stored, and every everything is uh, just on the user. User is responsible to do all of this. And you can actually see that it's going to be, um, you know, e uh, extremely difficult to work on such a machine um, so you know you can uh, easily see that you have already been able to work with different type of computers without knowing any details about those um, you know the uh, hardware details of the machine right so uh, this naked machine is not something that we um, you know on a regular basis will work on it so that's why we need a kind of interface. We need to design an interface that helps the user to work with the hardware. Uh, so um, without actually um, uh, forcing the user to need uh, to uh, learn about the, the details of the hardware, without actually forcing the user to take care of the, you know, writing down everything in binary, without, uh, you know, uh, for forcing the user to, uh, know where the uh, you know how to manage the data and the program on the memory so kind of we are going to help the user write down um, you know design um, an interface that works with the uh, the hardware and uh, with the with the user so it's going to actually give um, the user a kind of uh, you know um, such actually um, image that um, there is going to be an interface that um, helps the connection between the user and uh, um, the hardware. This interface is going to be called um, system software. Okay, so sy um, uh, system software is going to be a collection of, it's not just one program, but actually it's going to be a collection of programs that will manage all the resources of the computer, all the hardware, the memory, uh, the IO system, everything, everything that you have as your machine, are going to be those resources, right? So the uh, system software uh, will manage all those resources and it actually just, um, uh, you know, serve as an uh, intermediate, as a, an interface between the user and the hardware. So software system is going to have two different interfaces. One interface is between the user and the um, system software. So the user will actually just send out everything in every command uh, that needs to be done. The user uh, will send it to the uh, system software and this, then system software will actually send all those 
uh, commands operations to the hardware and will take care of uh, converting the commands to the binary format, will take care of managing the data um, and the program uh, on the memory, will uh, take care of um, you know, uh, managing different I.O. systems, uh, will take care of um, initiating the program, executing the program, showing the result to the user. So the software system is um, kind of creating a virtual machine, a virtual environment around all those resources. So this is actually showing in this picture as this way that there will be a virtual, you know, the user will work on a, uh, on a virtual mach machine instead of working on the hardware, on the naked machine, um, the user will work with this virtual machine, this virtual environment that the system software has been um, actually has created. Okay, so as I mentioned, um, system software is not just one program. It is going to be a collection of different programs. The main one is going to be called operating system. So operating system is the single most important piece of this um, system software, uh, which is responsible to um, you know, control over all other programs, um, all other actually pieces of um, system software. It is responsible to communicate with the user. It has actually, you know, the, the operating system is the one with, uh, which managing all of the other pieces of the um, system software. So um, if I wanted to actually just, um, you know, give you the idea that what does the operating system do, this picture is going to um, you know, explain it very well. Operating system is just like a central program that um, actually makes the connection between all different resources that you have. Operating system is going to have a couple of different programs, the different, um, you know, uh, softwares that works with um, all different I.O. systems, working with, the, for example, printer, with mouse, with keyboard, with monitor, um, different uh, kind of applications that you um, install over um, your computer. So um, this uh, picture here will actually you see that the operating system is going to work with the, the hardware, with the physical part, and it is going to actually have um, different uh, programs installed over it that we call them system softwares. These are the main, um, you know, uh, when you are actually installing any operating system on your machine. So, for example, if you're installing Windows on your uh, machine, Windows is, when you install it, it comes with, a, um, you know, if you haven't installed any other application, it will um, have a set of softwares. Those softwares are going to be called system softwares that, uh, for example, they are responsible to uh, work with the monitor, with uh, work with the, uh, for example, if you um, use um, a data in a USB, um, you know, uh, memory stick, you insert it, uh, you actually just, um, you know, um, plug it into your computer and you be, will be able to see those, um, any information that you ha has a stored on that, right? There will be some, um, some uh, software that works, um, you know, that makes you able to see the data on your memory stick. So every different piece of the uh, hardware um, that you have, uh, you, you have and you are going to actually work with it, all of them are going to have different, um, um, you know, um, different software systems that working with them. So makes you able to work with them. So except those system softwares that um, will actually come with the operating system, you as the user will be, um, you know, will be able to install other actually kind of application over the um, operating system, over your computer. So those are going to be those application softwares that um, whatever you need, for example, you uh, wanted to install, um, you know, um, different uh, browsers, you wanted to install different um, um, games, all of them are going to be application softwares that the user will um, actually install. Okay, so if, um, you know, this chapter is going to uh, focus on operating system 
And the first, I mean, the, the second section is just actually explaining um, these different pieces of, um, you know, uh, software systems that the operating system will work with it. Operating system has been actually, um, uh, you know, as I mentioned, operating system is going to be that single most important piece of software that works with all other pieces of um, system softwares. So operating system is going to, you know, all operating systems are going to actually have different pieces of um, uh, software systems. Um, the user interface, um, there are going to be some programs that works with the memory. There are some uh, programs uh, that works with the uh, I.O. There are some programs that works with um, actually um, allows you to write down different programs that we call them actually language services. There will be some um, different uh, softwares that works with, um, uh, you know, a data um, a storage, like for example, if you store the data on the disk or something, they are going to be called information manager and there will be actually some scheduler. So every operating system is going to have all of these different pieces. Let me actually just go through each one um, by one, one by one. What is a user interface? So you can see that in the modern computers, you are able to uh, actually see um, um, your um, you know, working with your computer over a monitor, right? You can see different, uh, you know, windows, you can see different, um, you know, working with, a, uh, you know, with a mouse, clicking on something, dragging something to something else. All of these are going to be a part of the user interface. So this is a graphical, um, we call it actually GUI, this graphical user interface, will um, provide a, a graphical control and makes it much easier for you as a user. You know, just think about it in this way. Is it going to be easier to write down your command or just, you know, um, be able to work with a mouse and um, the keyboard and just, you know, move different things and click on different actually uh, parts of the page and work with that. This is going to be the user interface. So the other part is going to be um, called language services. So um, language services are, um, you know, is going to be a collection of, um, a collection of, uh, again, softwares um, the, it's going to be including assembler, compiler, and interpreter. So what does this um, set of um, softwares um, doing for you? So for example, you are going to write down your own program that uh, does a specific thing. So you are going to use a Java to write down your program or Python to write down your program or C++, whatever high level programming languages that you choose. Because those algorithms that we have written in chapter two, right, we wrote the algorithm in um, a pseudocode, right? At the end, if you are going to execute it on the computer, you will need to translate it to some programming language. For example, you will write it in Python, you will write it in Java, in C++, any, high-level programming language. So all these language services, assembler, compiler, interpreters, they are going to help you, help the user. They allow the user to be able to write down the, their own program. Then um, the interpreter or the compiler will, com uh, you know, will translate the program into a language, which is going to be called assembly language. Then this program will send to the assembler. Assembler will uh, execute the program on the computer. So the assembler will translate it to uh, zero one, will translate the program to zero one, and then the program will be able to be executed on um, that uh, naked machine, the, the hardware, the main hardware that we have. The other piece was uh, called memory manager. So um, memory, memory managers are going to be all those programs that allows us to work with the memory, allocate the, a space to different, uh, you know, programs that you are executing on the machine and releasing the space whenever it is not required anymore. So when you are working on a machine, um, just think about it. You, you can, uh, you are able to execute different uh, programs on your machine, right? So you can open a browser and, 
uh, for example, just work on that browser. At the same time, you can open some editor like the Microsoft Word or Keynote or whatever um, you know editor that you want and also work on that one. Or you can actually uh, open some other program to play some uh, music, right? All of those programs need some memory. Uh, so there will be a, a set of um, software systems that they will manage the memory they give you know they give a memory to all these different applications and they store the memory over the they store the data over the memory and whenever that um, some data is not required it actually just um, release the data from the memory so the job of this part is just managing the the ram the memory there will be another set of um, you know um, application software systems that allows you to handle and organize the uh, you know mass storage devices so for example the memory stick the hardware uh, different actually type of um, hardwares inside the computer or uh, you know outside of it or even actually uh, working with the cloud so all of these are going to be information uh, part of the information manager um, we also need a set of um, system um, so, i'm sorry software systems that allows um, us to work with different io systems so for example you are working with the uh, scanner you are working with a speaker a printer um, all these different um, with a microphone all these different um, um, you know input output devices needs to be uh, you know managed so they will be a part of the io system um, also, one of the most important part of the software system is a scheduler. What is a scheduler? A scheduler will um, actually allows you to execute different programs at the same time on the computer. So just think about it in this way. You have one CPU uh, on your machine, but you will uh, you are able to uh, you know execute different programs on your computer. Uh, play um, music, just write down your code. Um, have an editor, um, have a browser on, um, you know, uh, open on your computer. All these different programs needs to be executed on the CPU, right? So a scheduler will, um, you know, um, uh, just works with these different programs and allows um, you to use just one CPU uh, to be able to execute all these different programs at the same time. So it will just uh, schedule different programs to be executed on the CPU. And the last piece is um, called the utilities. Um, utilities is going to be a collection of libraries. Okay, this is going to be a, a different pieces of a small um, um, software system libraries that allows us to work with, uh, you know, a simple applications. For example, a text editor, the notepad, or different, um, you know, um, different applications that allows us to work with image or sound on the computer, all of them are going to be collected um, as a program libraries. So in fact, software system is going to be the, um, you know, the collection of all of these uh, different actually uh, pieces of softwares. In this chapter, we are not able to actually cover all of them one by one. I just wanted to know that um, when you are, we are talking about a, a, you know, a, a software system and the operating system as actually as the main manager, um, it is working with all of, all of these different actually pieces. Um, but in this chapter, first we will focus on, um, I mean, in this next section, which is going to be the section 6.3 we will focus on language services and the assembler how we will be able to write down a program in high level programming language and then it will actually just um, be uh, translated to some assembly language that then that assembly language will be uh, will be uh, sent to an assembler and how the assembler will work with the hardware and execute the program and the last section will be about the, the operating system. So um, this is just not in your textbook and it's not, you know, learning about all of these different actually pieces. It's going to take probably one course. So here we are going to just learn about the overview that just know that um, all of these different pieces needs to be um, get together. So at the end, you will have uh, a full computer. 
with a user-friendly interface, in fact. Okay, so before we uh, move on to the next section, I just wanted to, um, you know, uh, recall that uh, the same actually issue that we had at the beginning of this um, chapter, we mentioned that question. If we are going to work on a naked machine, the user needs to write down the program in binary, then load this program, all of this set of uh, instructions um, on them into the memory. Um, also, it actually needs to load the data somewhere else in the memory, manage the different addresses in the memory, knows that where the program has been stored. At. So, for example, in your textbook, it, it's been just simplified in this way that, okay, a, a store the program a starting from the address zero, then tell the, we actually needs to start um, uh, a kind of you know uh, a go button that so that okay so you send a signal to the hardware and say that okay start executing from the um, address uh, zero and then uh, get the result from the memory the the final result will be written in the memory again right get the result from the memory and then show it show the results uh, convert them from the binary to the uh, to the human readable uh, you know, output and, uh, you know, at the end, just get the result out of it. So this, this is the way that we, if we are going with the naked machine, we have to actually do all these steps. But we will see that if we are able to, um, if we have access to a virtual machine, um, you know, a computer with an operating system and a, a full set of, um, you know, a software, uh, I mean, system software that allows you to gives you this um, virtual environment, then how we actually execute a program, it will be completely different because we have access to this virtual machine. So in this way, we will be able to write down our program in a in an editor. So for example, you write your program in some high level programming language like uh, Python or uh, Java or whatever programming languages you choose. So you will write down your program in a text editor um, in one of those languages. That language, then you actually store it in the computer. So for example, you will find some directory, you will create some directory somewhere on your computer and store this file inside your computer on some a specific address. Then there will be some... Um, you know, um, some language translator. So for example, some compiler or interpreter for, if you are writing in Python, for example, you need a, an interpreter for the Python. If you are writing in Java or C++, you will need um, a compiler. All of them are going to be called some kind of translator. So they translate the program that you have written in high level, uh, in high level language into the assembly language, into um, and then that assembly language will be uh, converted to the binary. So it hasn't actually been uh, specified in, in this chat. This, um, I mean, step three has its own um, two, three steps. So it will be actually the high level programming language converted to assembly language. Then assembly will be converted to the binary language. That binary language is exactly that program, that zero ones that will be written uh, and executed on the hardware. So they will be uh, stored on the memory, then a scheduler will be activated, then the scheduler will actually just take some, um, you know, um, time from the CPU and execute your program on the CPU. And then the IO system is responsible to get the result from the, um, again, read it, the final result that has been written on the memory. The IO system will read that result in binary and then show it to you as the, um, you know, to the user in a human readable uh, format. So now you can see that it's going to, you know, working in this virtual machine is going to be much easier if you were, uh, you know, compare, you know, compare it with the case that you are working with the naked machine. So in the next section, we will um, talk about what is this assembly language and what is this process of, um, you know, when you write um, your program in a high level programming language, how we will be able to execute it on the computer. We will, um, you know, focus on um, the assembler 
um, and uh, briefly talk about how we translate um, the language, uh, the program from high level language to the um, binary language, something that the hardware can understand.